All right, here we go. Part two, day two. I actually made a bit more progress yesterday than I actually showed. I went out later on, had a uh, second wind, and uh, I've managed to get it up on the ramps. And I've also, going underneath, which is, I realized my jacket was dead noisy on that last video. And I've got the second jacket on again. Uh, there we go. Prop shafts. They came off pretty easy in the end. I've got them all off. Uh, the prop shafts still attached while I mess on with other things. Um, and I also left it on. I did something naughty in that I got all the bolts off, both the prop shaft here and the one which goes to the uh, other side of the transfer box central uh, center differential so both those are off loose uh, I'm going to tie those up because I think I can drop the gearbox and all the stuff out I think there's plenty of room so I'm going to tie these up uh, when I come to drop it out properly so I'm good with that came off pretty well the tool I had was pretty good as well it actually worked better this time and I went from above rather than trying to undo them here I actually ended up going higher up on the top. It was a bit of a fiddle to get the uh, gun on it, uh, the windy gun, but it did come off in the end. Um, today's event, gearbox cross member, and this can be a pig to get off. I think mine will come off. It's been hammered before, you can see where it's been beaten and hammered like crazy. And it needs to come off so I can drop it down in one. Also it needs refurbing because it's in a right old state, this thing. Uh, four balls either side, four in here. I think there's something to do with the... Let's have a look, a hanger. I think I can get that off. If I just get the hanger off, um, it should miss the uh, exhaust on here. So that, it's not as bad as I thought actually. Depends what access is like on the other side. There's always something there, isn't there? I'm trying to feel now. It's on that side and... No, I think that should come off. If I get that off, uh, I'll be good to go, I reckon. Um, which seems pretty stupid thing to say, but they were the two things that I was worried about the rest of it. I reckon I can handle it pretty easy. Right, so as you'll have seen in a previous video, um, this thing is down and out. It's temperamental at the best of times. I did get it to work on the afternoon. I got a full tank, um, so I was able to get all the props uh, bolts off. And then when it came to replenish the air in it, it just cut out again and I couldn't get it started. Um, so I guess I made a bit more progress. Uh, so I'm sort of happy with that, but I'm not happy with this thing. I'm slightly worried about getting it going. Um, mainly because I don't know what's wrong with it. Right, here we go. Current situation. Cross member. Um, two bolts at the bottom. These are captive type nuts on them. Uh, so not bad, they're like imperial sizes as well, another weird size and uh, the two at the top, mine, they did have uh, nuts on. Right, so moving on to the other side, uh, I got the two bottom ones out, easy enough. This top one is stuck in currently, a uh, similar situation to the other where these were backed up with uh, odd size nuts as I usually do with my chassis swap. Everything was really hard to put everything on with a windy gun. So um, bent all of the washers and part of the chassis as well. Idiots, absolute idiots that did this. Amateurs and they're supposed to be a Land Rover independent. Absolutely horrendous. Um, so this one is actually stuck in here. It's moving, uh, I've given a clean up, I've put some penetrating fluid in, I will get it easy enough. Um, but what I am going to do, I'm going to remove the floor. This is the uh, passenger footwell floor. So if I take that out, I'll get easier access to this one. It's just hard getting the spanner on and cranking it one-handed. So uh, I'm sure I'm going to get that out. And then I'll bash this out somehow. I don't know how tight it is. One thing I have done, I did disconnect the uh, exhaust here. Um, just so that I can. This bungee gets in the way a little bit. Um, to get to that one, probably wouldn't have to do it actually, um, but I took it off in the end just because this one was being a pain to get out. But I reckon I could have done it if it wasn't seized so much, I could have done it without taking the exhaust apart. 
So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get this floor out so I can get access to this bolt. Right, so these are some of the bolts I've taken off. These are off the actual gearbox cross member and you can see every single one is bent. This is when they did the chassis swap on it and they've just used a pneumatic or an air compressor to tighten everything up. They've over tightened. I don't think they've heard of a torque wrench before. Just everything has been bashed on. Unbelievable. Messed everything up. Brand new galvanized chassis. Just over tightened it. You can see, you can see it's bent every single one of them I've taken off. There's another one. Distorted. Absolutely incredible. The nuts are all rounded off that they've done. Everything that's attached to doing a chassis changeover, uh, every single nut and bolt has pretty much been trashed by them. And that's why I don't generally let anyone else work on my car because they just do it as fast as they can, they don't care what bolts they put in um, they just shove something on there I mean these I'm probably going to renew a lot of them, I'll clean them up see what state they're in, definitely the nuts are going to get done um, possibly the bolts as well when I've had a look at them, all the washers are going to get renewed and that's what happens when you do it yourself, you do a much better job it might take longer, um, it's not to do with course, it's to the quality of the work at the end of the day and I know that I, even though I'm not a mechanic I can do a lot better job and the person that tried to do the chassis swap for me. Unbelievable. Anyway, those are off so far. I've got some more somewhere. I'm just going to keep them in pots and have an assessment when I come to put them back on. Uh, for the meantime, I'm going to concentrate on getting as much stripped down as I possibly can. So that's it. End of day two, part two. Made good progress. It might not look it. Um, floor pan is loose but I can't get it out yet because it's kind of has to come off out in a certain order this matting is a pain all of this it provides sound deadening and uh, wear and tear keeps the water and muddy boots out that sort of thing um, but it's a pain to work around you really have to be pulling at it you can see over there that side it's all curled up it's a nightmare uh, so today got the cross member loose pretty much but I need to access it from under here to get the last bolt out um, floors loose the tunnel is loose but there's one bolt under all that lot which I'm gonna have to attack from the other side I'm not gonna do it now I'm out of time uh, this thing I'll get out tomorrow it's just four bolts underneath and then I'm pretty good. There's a lot of wires, that's a, one of my worries. A lot of wires that I've got, I can't remember. I know what they're for heated seats and things like that. Into the uh, spare secondary fuse box. And uh, so I need to sort that out. That feels loose, that one. Uh, I think I'm maybe there's a bit of slack on there and pull them apart. Let's see how that goes. So both the gear knobs are locked tight on. I cannot get them off here. That's, I don't know probably break them um, I think I can feed all of this lot through the tunnel when it comes off I've loosened this this has to come off anyway the turret this has been loosened um, but there's a bracket there I'll have a look to see how it's fastened if I can get the bracket off then I'll pull this up out the way and it'll get rid of all of that lot but uh, fuse box I had to take out to get the carpet out if you don't have carpet this is much much easier job to do it's a five minute job if the carpet's not there but everything is hidden under this so I've had to remove loads of bits to get access to the carpet the side panels off here to get access to it the handbrake cable um, or handbrake itself is going to have to be uh, loosened so I'll move the carpet get a bit of relief to get that bolt um, but yeah pretty good progress uh, happy I got the cross member sort of out. I'd like to have dropped the cross member uh, out and got it one less thing to do, but that's the way it is. That's where I'm at. And tomorrow I think I'll be in a position to pretty much wait on the crane hoist, I think. Um, I need to do the clutch slave cylinder. That's only two bolts. Had that off before, so it won't be a problem. Uh, some of the electrical wiring under here. I need to sort out, I need to do the earth, there's an earth to the transfer box and that needs to come off again, I've had that off before, it's no problem 
and that's about it now as regards what I've done or why I'm actually pulling this out I mentioned before about having trouble with the actual uh, gearbox selecting uh, first and second mainly now I have played around things I've done already prior to jumping into this big hole that I'm in at the moment uh, things I've done I've played around with the bias springs already uh, could not I must have messed about with those 20 30 40 times I can't tell you how many times and I just couldn't get it right um, the turret I've had it off it's got new slick shift off this so this thing pivot is new and the bush at the bottom is new um, so that's not the problem the turret itself it's not worn that bad I've seen ones that are a lot worse than mine and still work better than mine at the moment so it's not the turret um, change the gearbox oil I've uh, used to have MTF 94 in I went to a uh, Dexron 3 I think it was and that just made it worse it's a lighter oil and it just made it worse sometimes people have fixed their gear changes by doing that but um, that didn't help I've done the master cylinder it's had the uh, it's been bled as well all the hydraulic stuff several times I've bled it naturally and uh, reverse fed it and uh, pressurized system as well and uh, still nothing good from that it's got like new clutch on I've said that before it could be something to do with that but I doubt it um, so I'm going to persevere with this and like I say happy with where I'm at end of day two and uh, this afternoon I'm going to play around with my compressor a little bit more because I could really have done with that today I'm going to need it later on I know for a fact so over and out end of part two day two